there welcome to inquiring minds my name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen review this Hongdian N1S piston filler and if you're watching me on Odyssey it's a ripoff they've stolen my channel lawyers are on their way to rip that channel out by the roots before I discuss this new model Hongdian I want to first take a moment to apologize to all of you for my last video review of the Jinhao 88 I was being smug pretentious and annoying I know I apologize unreservedly I offer a complete and utter retraction and deeply regret any distress my comments may have caused you or your family and I hereby undertake not to repeat any such slander at any time in the future all right all right I apologize you're really sorry I'm really really sorry I apologize unreservedly okay in short I'm sorry and truthfully, I made a mistake. there that ought to appease you lot there's just no pleasing some people there's nothing I could do with please a pair like you short of putting straw in the rooms that being said back to the world of dreams yes sir. the Hongdian N1S this pen snuck up on me folks I bought it because it was yet another model from Hongdian whose pens just keep getting better with each new model and this one is no exception you see they've taken the already excellent Hongdian N7 piston filler and removed all the things that I complained about I didn't like the heavy cap the fact that the cap posts on the piston knob and the fact that there's little cap clearance for swapping in nibs like the Kaigu long knife architect nib and within months they've created the N1S which I can only think is an acronym for Hongdian new one sorry they must be listening to me very closely to create this new model and since you're listening Hongdian excuse me for a moment folks while I have a private chat with Hongdian talk amongst yourselves talk amongst yourselves <laughs> Hongdian folks join me at camera two hi there Hongdian people thanks for watching and listening and since you are listening could you do me a solid and make me an N1S that looks something like this but with your clip this is my Pelican M800 cap with a Moon Man M800 Galaxy body so you can just take the N1S and make the barrel Galaxy that's G A L A X Y Galaxy and the cap section and piston knob can be black you can call it the Hongdian DJR I won't mind or better yet call it the limited edition inquiring minds Hongdian IM thanks and we're back pardon the interruption I like this new model from Hongdian so much I created yet another Doug's Inquiring Minds shootout spreadsheet let's take a look at why I'm so keen on this new model and do a shootout with five other piston fillers right now so here it is January 23rd National Handwriting Day and what do I get in the mail but on Chinese New Year as well I get a new Chinese pen and this is the Hongdian N1S let's open it up and there it is well that's very nice I got it in the blue and it is a piston filler with an ink window and we'll clean this pen out with a little bit of soapy water and rinse it and then we'll ink it up and do a review the Hongdian N1S I'm going to show the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen I'm also going to share my piston filler shootout spreadsheet where I compare this Hongdian N1S to five other pens Pelican M800 a Twisby Echo a Narwhal Schoolkill a pen BBS 309 and a Hongdian N7 but let's look at this pen first overall it is a medium sized pelican style piston filler in a really nice aqua colored cracked ice style turned acrylic and has gold colored metal hardware and here it is next to my pelican M800 at 134.5 millimeters long capped the N1S is only 1.5 millimeters longer than the pelican M600 which is the model just under this one and identical in length posted at 154 millimeters so if you're interested in finding out whether a Pelican M600 will fit your hand spending 25 or 26 dollars on one of these will give you a pretty good idea 
From the top, we see the gold metal flat top finial with a negative image laser etching of laurel leaves surrounding a dove with the words Hongdian and world peace. That's world peace, not world peas. I really do want world peace. And the finial steps down in two steps to the clip ring, which holds the standard and nicely shaped Hongdian clip, which is nicely springy and usable. The turned acrylic cap tapers up to a thin gold metal band that says Hongdian on the front and the model number N1S on the back. There's a tiny step down to the barrel, which tapers about two millimeters over its length down to the piston knob, which is separated from the barrel with a thin gold metal band and has a gold metal disc on the bottom finial. The cap unscrews with one and about a quarter turns to reveal the clear acrylic ink window with a gold metal ring on the bottom and the matching acrylic section, which is nicely thick and has a small taper and a very subtle flare towards the number six size Hongdian steel extra fine nib and black plastic feed. The section can't be removed, but it's really a nicely comfortable shape that tapers from about 12 millimeters here to about 11 and a half millimeters just before the flare. And the section is different from both the Hongdian N7 and the Hongdian N8. You see all three sections are different. The Hongdian N7 is a metal section. The N8 is acrylic and it's a fairly straightforward barrel shape, but this one is all acrylic with a slightly different shape and I like it. Let's get a closer look at this nib. It's the very pretty two-toned pagoda design identical to the nib on my N7. It has radiating vertical lines, the pagoda, EF, and Hongdian engraved in the top. The nib and feet are part of a nib assembly that can be easily unscrewed for maintenance or swapping. Someone already asked me if this nib could be swapped with other number six size nibs. I was able to pull this nib out and replace it very easily with my Hongdian long knife number six size nib, as well as a Jinhao and Moonman number six size nibs. I'm going to do a quick swap during the writing sample and write with this long knife architect style nib as well. The inside of the cap shows a ledge milled into it that meets with the section to seal the nib from evaporation. And if I shine a backlight on this, you can see how that section lines up with that step. The cap posts deeply and securely, making it a wonderfully balanced and lightweight pen. It's actually better balanced than my Pelican M800 posted. The M800 posts beautifully, but it does back weight that pen slightly and makes it a little bit longer. And you can see that the M800 is a little bit longer and that cap is a little bit heavier than the N1S. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with comfortably. I bought this pen from Mary's Stationery Store on AliExpress for $23.18, although they are currently selling for around $26 US. The pen comes in four colors, a deep red, green, orange, and this ice blue teal color. I know the camera doesn't show it well, but this is more turquoise than light blue. I thought it would be a good idea to show how to take this pen apart using the Hongdian tool. You can get this if you just ask your retailer uh, for one of these piston wrenches when you buy your pen. They don't tend to advertise that this is available, but it's like one of those coupons at the grocery store that the checkout sort of winks at you and says, oh, did you forget your coupon today? So ask them, have you got the wrench for the Hongdian piston filler? This also works on Mont Blanc 149s and 146s. So we take the cap off. I've emptied the pen of ink. It's got a little bit of water left in it. And we're gonna open the piston up just in case it wanted to squirt on me. So we open the piston all the way. And then if you look carefully, there's a notch there and a notch there. So we're gonna put our piston wrench in there and fit it into that notch and into that notch. And then it's almost like you need three hands for this. You hold the wrench and your pen and you turn the piston knob down on top of the wrench making sure that it stays in those slots there that way you can hold the wrench and turn the barrel of the pen to loosen that piston 
and you see the wrench holds tight and then you can pull that piston rod out do whatever maintenance you need to do clean out your barrel add a little bit of silicone grease if you need to this one's fine and then you can put the whole thing back in again without having to disassemble it you don't need to take it apart any more than this and you leave the wrench on and then you just turn it and then hold the wrench and turn the body of the pen until it's tight okay don't over tighten it acrylic cracks and then you can release the piston knob and close it down and voila now let's look at some size comparisons and here is the Hongdian N1S with a Pelican M800, a Twisby Echo, a Narwhal Schoolkill, Schoolkill, Skulkill, Schoolkill, a Narwhal, a Pen BBS 309, and a Hongdian N7. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. You can see that the N1S posts better than all of them. And the N7 does post, but it posts so it grips that piston knob. So if you turn that cap, you're going to have an inky mess on your hands. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. They're all plenty long enough to write with comfortably. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Hongdian N1S, and it has a number six size extra fine steel nib. Let's check the wetness. Look at how wet this nib is. For a fine nib, it's delightfully wet right out of the box. And the nib is smooth, smooth, smooth. I think this is the first extra fine Chinese steel nib that I've ever written with right out of the box. Sorry, the bubble wrap that I've not been annoyed with. Most of them, have, you know, you kind of expect a lot of feedback bordering on scratch from an extra fine nib. And I'm not a fan of extra fine nibs or fine nibs for that matter. But this is delightful and the ink today is franklin christoph spanish blue it's a lovely shading teal ink thanks murray and as to line variation well again this is chinese steel extra fine nib and it's not giving me any bounce at all. Very stiff. But I didn't expect it to be anything other than that. So you won't get any line variation from it. But the nib makes a 0 0.3 millimeter line, which makes it a Western extra, extra fine or a Japanese extra fine to fine on my Richard Binder line width chart, which you can find linked in the description. And for our quote, and for some reverse writing, it's a little bit scratchier and very, very thin and dry. And for some quick writing, Yeah, that feed has no difficulty keeping up at all. I'm liking the way that ink is shading. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, first let's get Doug's Inquiring Minds handy dandy shootout spreadsheet to give us the answer to which of these five piston fillers is the best based on empirical evidence. Here's my spreadsheet and I've made a column for eight criteria. Price, whether the pen is made of turned acrylic, ink capacity, whether it has a number six size nib, posted and unposted length in millimeters, whether the section is removable, and the weight in grams. I could have put in whether it has an ink window or not, but since the ink levels in all five pens is visible, it's a moot point. 
I weighted the acrylic column by two to force the crackable Twisby to the bottom of the list. Nothing like having your thumb on the scale. The other criteria are ranked, low price is good, as is large capacity, low weight, and shorter length when posted. A perfect score is 34, and the winner with 29 is my least favorite piston filler, the Pen BBS 309. That's because I don't have a category for does the piston unscrew itself and dump ink all over your cat? Because that would be a big old yes for this pen. And we can also eliminate the Pelican from the discussion based on the $600 price differential. And we can eliminate the Twisby just based on the fact that it's a Twisby. No, that's not fair. The Twisby is reasonably priced, and even though it has a smaller nib, the section is removable and the entire pen comes apart easily, when you want it of course, and it has a large ink capacity. I was surprised that the Narwhal and the N7 came in last with only 15 points, but the N7 is heavy, doesn't post well, and has the lowest ink capacity of the group. And the Narwhal is the most expensive of the group after the Pelican and doesn't post well at all. As always, your mileage may vary. Your mileage may vary. But what do I think about this N1S? I thought this was going to be an ordinary Chinese pen, but I've been pleasantly surprised with a number of things. I wasn't surprised that it's extremely well built. That's almost a given now with each new Hongdian model. They just keep getting better and better. They're so superbly put together. But I was surprised at how light and comfortable this pen is, posted and unposted. And how nice this new section is and i was really surprised at how well this extra fine nib wrote right out of the bubble wrap i don't like fine nibs let alone extra fine nibs but this one's great i do like my long knife nib a little bit better but that's another thing to like about the n1s the nibs are swappable one of the key things here is cap clearance the hongdian n7 has a very small cap clearance as i demonstrate in my short video about which nibs fit into the Hongdian N6, N7, and 100 fountain pens. And you can see that video by clicking right up here. Perhaps Hongdian watched that video because the N1S has really ample cap clearance. Let's turn the lights down a little bit here and perhaps you can see how much clearance there is in that cap between the nib and the end. It looks like it's about eight or nine, possibly even 10 millimeters. That's great for nib swappers. Looks like it has enough clearance you could even put a Zebra G in there. And I like the acrylic. All I can say to Hongdian is remember what we talked about earlier. Galaxy folks, galaxy. And in short order, I now have two pens on my best of 2023 list. The Asvine V126, you can see I can say Asvine, which I sadly don't own anymore. But I have two more on the way. And now this Hongdian N1S. I look forward to putting the Hongdian DJR Galaxy on the list real soon now. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Snap, snap, green, green, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. But I promised I would do a live nib swap. So let's do a hot swap of this nib and see if we can write with it. And just take the feed. And here's the long knife. Push that in. There's a little Jack Hernandez tip. Just roll a little bit of ink down onto a Kleenex to prime that feed. Another nice thing about a piston filler. There we go. Ink is flowing. And let's see, here is the Hongbian N1S. And now it has a Kaigalu long knife long blade whatever your translator says not too bad thin vertical thick horizontal great architect style nib and they're cheap like borscht folks this one has the flames motif on it some of them have sort of a snakeskin motif on it it's two-tone gold and steel, uh, and that gold doesn't really even line up with the pattern, but who cares? This is wonderful. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store, 
and when you shop at gold spot using my link you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you you can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and i guarantee i'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis badges and sneak peek unboxing videos and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote